today we're going to talk about the electric fence system. So the basic philosophy of fencing on this farm, or at least my own uh, side of the farm, is that the perimeter of your farm should be uh, heavily fenced. And that's where you're going to have most of your heavy duty infrastructure in terms of keeping animals in. Uh, and we'll look at that. That's basically woven wire on our farm, maybe with a strand of electric fence going on top. Anywhere else besides the perimeter of where our property runs is either temporary fencing, which is usually a poly net, or uh, strip lines of electric fence to connect to the poly net. And so this way we're not having to spend a ton of money on infrastructure and we can really spend most of our time moving the animals around like we need to. The, the thing about having a lot of heavy duty infrastructure, uh, some people might say it's good because it makes sure they keep the animals in. But in order to gain that, uh, that benefit, you're going to have to lose a lot. And what you're going to have to lose is flexibility. So the pasture doesn't stay the same year round. It doesn't even stay the same from season to season. You're going to have different uh, concentrations of specific species uh, compared from last year to this year and from this year to the next year. Um, and those species are also going to change from season to season. So in the spring, we have a lot of buttercups. They're all blooming. Uh, later on, it transitions more into stuff like deer tongue. And all that is just say, every, the pasture is a a constant state of change and you have to be flexible in order to meet the needs of your animals via the pasture and if you just have a fence that's in one location all the time you can't move it um, you spend a ton of money of it on it not only are you going to spend a ton of money on it and reduce your capital you're also going to not be able to utilize that pasture as efficiently as possible during that season so with that being said, right now we're going to look at where our fence box is, and this is just where the power for the electric fence uh, happens. So this is our, our fence, fence box shed. It's so old, you can see there's a hornet's nest on the door. Um, there's actually a ton of cockroaches in there too, so it's kind of disgusting. But we're going to take a look at it. I'm going to turn the lights on in here. So this is our fence box, we have an Bear Enforcer, um, model 2400, and our ground is connected right here, uh, and this is where our fence actually goes out. This is where we plug it in. Uh, I don't like to have the fence on while I'm working with it. That, that would be an electrifying experience that I don't want to have. So I'm not going to turn it on right now. But basically we just plug it in to the socket. and. Then, going outside of the, of the fence box shed, always try and keep the door closed because snakes will get in there. It's not fun to be, be uh, walking in here on a cold night and uh, stick your hand in to plug the fence box in and there's a snake up by your hand. So, <clears throat> this is the line that came from the, the box, we have a few grounds somewhere around here if I can find them. Uh, and they just, basically the science is the, the grounds, here they are, the grounds take electrons from the soil and put it into the fence box so it can electrify everything that you, you hook up to the fence box. So this green copper wire is coming out from the fence box and it's connecting to, whoa, <laughs> there's an, an, a lizard right there, scared me. There is, uh, this is our first strip line that connects to the rest of our... Of our is pasture. that hot? No, it's not hot. So we, we use a lot of rebar for our strip lines. They're very temporary, and that's why I like them. They're, they don't cost a whole lot of money. 
you can put them up and down really easily and I could change this whole setup really easily if I wanted to. So coming over here, <clears throat> um, our first strip line is connected to our second strip line. And this strip line goes all the way down that section uh, through the woods and all the way down that section through the woods. And then um, basically this is the, the same concept over and over again. Um, where the fence is on the perimeter and then it'll cross cut a pasture so that we can get, um, if the goats are at one side of the pasture uh, that's right beside the permanent fence, uh, the woven wire fence, then uh, they can be connected to one line, one strip line, and if they're on in the middle of the pasture where uh, they can't the, the wires that are connecting the strip line to the poly net can't reach, then um, we can connect them to the middle cross section strip line. Okay? And so we'll walk over there and look at some of the strip lines that we use most. Okay, so this area for right now will show you a little bit more of how we uh, hook everything up. So here is one of our strip lines, and from where we were at, it cross cut the pasture and then started coming along this permanent fence and it'll go out to that pasture over there, the low pasture. Um, this poly net right now, this is one of our worst looking ones, but it is protecting our ducks against predators. And we have it hooked up via these eye bolts, uh, sorry, not eye bolts, flip bolts. Um, and I like using those a lot, they tend to work pretty well and connecting uh, the strip line to the, the poly net. Usually what we will do, uh, if it's not so close that I can just connect the poly net to the strip line directly, we have either, well, a piece of insulated wire, whether it be copper or aluminum, um, and that always works pretty well. Okay, so really that's how we set everything up with our fences. And that's how we electrify our poly net as we're moving the goats through the pastures. And, and also the hogs as well. Okay, well, I'll see you next time. And we should be talking about what to do with your herbivores. <laughs>